Uh, ladies <coughs> and gentlemen, I'm really privileged to introduce the Secretary General of uh, the UN, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. And uh, all I want to say, certainly not try to introduce him, but uh, there's never been a greater champion of action on climate change among world leaders than him. He has said very early on in his term as Secretary General that <coughs> climate change is the defining challenge of our time. And he has been relentless in his efforts to see that the world moves towards tackling this enormous challenge. And the last point I'd like to make is essentially something based, I hope, on the opinions of the scientific community. He has been a great supporter of the IPCC. He has also taken the trouble to come to uh, Valencia in Spain in 2007 to release uh, the synthesis report for the fourth assessment report. And again, early in November of last year, he came to Copenhagen for releasing the synthesis report of the fifth assessment report. Secretary General, I'm sorry there was some delay in connecting. I'm here with uh, Madame uh, Segalin Hoyal next to me. And we, I've already introduced you and I've said you're the greatest supporter of action on climate change and we really look up to your leadership, sir. We'd like to hear your words of wisdom, if I may. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, namaste. Good evening. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm extremely honored uh, to be part of your discussions on very important issues on climate change. I really hoped uh, to be there in person, uh, but for some scheduling issues, I'm not able to uh, be with you, but I'm now uh, trying to uh, speak uh, uh, through uh, a video. And I hope you will understand all this inconvenience which has been caused by the disconnection. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I commend highly uh, Terry for organizing the Delhi Sustainable Development Summit. Uh, for 15 years, uh, this forum has helped promote global sustainability. Uh, your focus uh, this year on sustainable development goals and dealing with uh, climate change is particularly uh, relevant. In September, the United Nations will convene a special summit on sustainable development, marking the creation of new sustainable development goals that will apply to all nations. And in December, in Paris, the world leaders will go to Paris with the goal of securing a meaningful universal climate change agreement. Addressing climate change and embracing sustainable development are complementary and interdependent. And this is just the two sides of one coin. And investing in climate is investing in uh, uh, growth, and investing in growth will end in investing in climate change. Now, renewable energy can mean cleaner air and better health. A climate smart agriculture offers better water and food security. Climate change threatens to undermine hard-earned development gains. But combating climate change is an opportunity for low-carbon growth that will benefit people and the planet. Prime Minister Modi is pursuing this vision of development without destruction. I was in New Delhi and Gujarat uh, last month, and I had a very good talk, and I was very much impressed and inspired by Prime Minister's leadership and vision. We see it in India's rapid scale-up of solar power, the Ganga rejuvenation project, and the creation of smart cities, 100 smart uh, cities. I'm going to uh, dispatch uh, uh, former New York uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg as my uh, special envoy to this um, New Delhi uh, meeting, uh, we, in we invest. Uh, these solutions can reduce uh, poverty, 
catalyze clean, sustainable growth, and increase resilience to climate change. Over the next 15 years, the world will make a massive investment in new infrastructure for cities, energy, and agriculture. If this spending is directed toward low carbon goods, technologies, and services, we will be on our way towards a more sustainable, equitable future. But if we ignore the low carbon pathway, we may fail to achieve the sustainable development goals. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will put ourselves and our future generations at grave risk from dangerous climate disruptions. That is why climate change and sustainable development have been my top priorities since taking office. I have traveled the world to see climate impact and solutions. Virtually all the places around the world, I have been there. And I really wanted to send alarm bells with my own eyes, with my own voice. I have met those at risk and those who are pioneering a sustainable future. And I have worked with the world leaders to generate the political momentum we need to change course. Now is the moment. It's time for action, time for a global agreement. We need all hands on deck to meet the climate change. Now, government must create the policy frameworks. But the private sector also has an important role to play as does the civil society, the scientific community, and think tanks such as Terry. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to share your ideas and be bold in your recommendations. Together, we can build a more prosperous, resilient, and sustainable world. I wish you all a productive meeting. Uh, thank you, uh, Daniel. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Would you be able to take a couple of questions from two young people? And if yes, so, please. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to call on uh, the first questioner uh, from the audience. Uh, sir, I am a youth leader at DSDS 2015, and I thank Terry for giving me this opportunity. So my question to you is, what do you hope to see happen on climate change this year, following your successful climate summit last September? This uh, year 2015 is a very crucially important year. Um, this is the this year, end of this year, uh, we meet the target date of the Millennium Development Goals, and we have to shape the Sustainable Development Goals. And now, most importantly, we have to agree a meaningful universal climate change agreement in Paris in December. That put us all on track to limiting global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius. The climate summit showed, which I convened in September last year, showed that there is a great deal of climate action happening in cities and by citizens and CEOs, not only by government. I want the government, businesses, and civil society to intensify efforts, reduce emissions, and take advantage of sustainable low-carbon investment opportunities. We need, as I said, we need all hands on deck. Uh, not a single government or United Nations can do it alone. We have to have all everybody's hands on deck. We have no time to waste and much to gain by building a low-carbon, climate-resilient world. 2015 is the year for global action, and I count on your leadership and commitment. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Secretary General. Uh, next and final question. My question is, what do we need to do to get an agreement in Paris, and what do we hope to, and what do we hope to, it will accomplish? I think uh, everybody should work together. Uh, when I participated in launching a conference of IPCC fifth 
assessment report in Copenhagen uh, last November. Uh, the IPCC report clearly stated that this climate change is happening because of a human behavior. So the answer is only natural that uh, it is a human being and us uh, to address this issue. Now, climate change is a global challenge. We need all countries that are developed or developing to be part of the solution and commit to reaching an agreement in Paris. An agreement in Paris must put us on the pathway limiting global temperature rise below 2 degrees centigrade. The agreement must also be durable and allow for countries to scale up their commitments over time. I'm calling on all major economies in a position to do so, to submit ambitious uh, intended nationally determined contributions, what we call technically INDCs, uh, intended nationally determined contributions by the end of March. Uh, I attended the AU summit meeting last week, and I have urged all African countries uh, to do their own ambitious uh, target uh, contributions. Finance is also critical for meaningful climate agreement and the sustainable development goals. We must have a very robust uh, financial mechanism. We need the developed countries deliver on their goal of mobilizing $100 billion per year by 2020 and $100 billion thereafter annually to support developing countries to mitigate and adapt as they adapt to climate change and crop emissions. We have reached the first $10 billion milestone for the Green Climate Fund. This is just an initial capitalization of out of $100 billion. The fund must disperse this money as quickly as possible so that it benefits the people we need it most. This uh, technology transfer and financial support for developing countries is the way we give confidence and trust to uh, many developing countries who may not have a capacity to address uh, these issues. And I really count on a strong commitment of um, OECD countries. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Secretary General. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. May I request that you give the Secretary General another hand, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I wish uh, productive, uh, very good, excellent uh, discussions on climate change. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I hope next year you will be with us. Thank you. <laughs>